Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining in to recalibrate this day as we uh, look at Proverbs chapter 3, verses 7 to 8. It says this, Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. And it will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. When I was reading um, this last week, um, I was, I was reading this whole chapter of, of Proverbs chapter 3 for some devotionals, and um, at the time, I, I was just, at the time when I read it, I was just thinking about different things, and um, verse 7, verse, uh, five, verse 5 and 6 are, is well known, is often quoted, of trusting in the Lord with all your heart and not leaning on your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your paths straight, He will make straight your paths. And then the very next verse, verse 7, says, Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. And I realized, as I was reading that, it hit me pretty hard that there's a connection between trusting in the Lord, not, uh, not leaning on your own understanding, and not being wise in your own eyes. And I think that that really spoke to me, in particular, because it's, it's incredible how... It's incredible how often I'm prone to be wise in my own eyes, to think that I know what's up about certain things, or that I know what's best, or I'm, I'm smart enough to know how to make the right decision, or I'm capable enough to be able to, to, uh, to work through things. But that goes right against what it says in the verse 5 of, not, of leaning on your own understanding. We're commanded to not lean on our own understanding, because our own understanding gets us in trouble. Um, these, this be not wise in your own eyes makes me think of the book of Judges where it seems like in the first half of the book of Judges every chapter begins with and the people did what was evil in the sight of the Lord or they did what was right in their own eyes and so you just you see what kind of cycle that gets you into when you sit down and you read the whole book of Judges you see very clearly that what starts with doing what's evil in God's sight, what's doing right in your own eyes, leads to sin and slavery and sorrow, and then the people would cry out to God at that point, God would show compassion and mercy, send someone, a judge, to deliver them, then they would be restored. And in the very next chapter, and they did what was evil in their own sight. That generation came and went, and then the new generation came up, not knowing God, doing what's evil in their own sight. And it's a very, very disheartening book to read because it just seems like there's no there's no understanding like these people just aren't getting it but then i have to be extremely careful because i think well what makes me any different i'm prone to the same things i'm prone to being wise in my own eyes and so i began to break down what does being wise in my own eyes mean and without getting too lengthy in this this recalibrate i think honestly it's just Recognizing that every decision that I make, and every step that I take, if it's not being prayed about, if it's not being, if it's not being considered in, in the filter of, is this going with God or against God, I think that's being wise in my own eyes. Assuming that um, I know what's right and I can do it on my own. Coming to, coming to the office in the morning, at, at nine and then sitting at my desk and then just immediately hitting the books and thinking of something clever to say at youth or spending the first chunk of my day in prayer asking God for help to show me what I need to know because what he his ways are not my ways and therefore his thoughts are not my thoughts and he has a plan and a purpose for uh, for what's about for what would happen with our youth lesson that I would be able to see coming and therefore I need to trust him we can save ourselves a lot of pain by fearing the Lord and turning away from evil. We could save ourselves a lot of, of heartache and, and distress by not leaning on our own understanding. And we're told that it'll be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. So at like the very core of even our, our human selves, there is rest to be found and there's, there's refreshment to be found in seeking God's way and not our way. There's this connection between choosing our own way that being wise in our own eyes and forsaking God's leading that just leads to pain and heartache. And it may not be physical pain, uh, like a hurt hip or something, but 
it's a pain of, of just emptiness and it's a pain of dissatisfaction and it's, it's a pain of, of recognizing that you're choosing the wrong way, even if you don't realize you're choosing the wrong way. And that's the importance of reading scripture is it's important to know which is the right way and to choose it. Do not despise the Lord's discipline. This is verse 11, verse 11 and 12. Do not despise the Lord's discipline or be weary of his reproof. For the Lord reproves him whom he loves as a father of the son in whom he delights. I'm very thankful that that is included um, because it inevitably answers the question that we're not going to be able to follow perfectly. <laughs> it, it answers for us that no, nope, we will not achieve the perfect walk with Christ on earth. We just won't achieve it. That's not the goal. The goal is to follow the Lord in all the ways that he leads us. And inevitably, we will mess up, we will make mistakes. And we will experience times in our life where it's painful to learn lessons. It's painful to learn the lesson of waiting. It's painful to learn the lesson of having joy in a certain circumstance. And in those pains, there's, there's a disciplining work that God's doing in our hearts to, to break us from, from trying to be wise in our own eyes and instead to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. And we won't, we won't understand how to trust in the Lord with all our heart unless we go through situations and circumstances that God allows us to go through where that will be our only comfort, that will be our only option. And it's, a, it's, it's difficult that it often always comes to that point where we recognize we're in a difficult spot before we recognize what it's for, instead of being able to recognize it first without having to go through the pain. But then again, that's the part of, of the discipline. God is disciplining those he loves as a father or the son in whom he delights. God loves us as a father, which is miraculous that God of all creation would reach out to us as, as people who are constantly prone to be wise in our own eyes and, and scorn God's word and resist his, his word, that he would love us as, as a father and that he would discipline us so that we would be broken from that, that uh, perception that we can do it on our own, but God would not leave us there. He would he would show us that we can't do it on our own. He can give us the strength we need. And when trusting in him and acknowledging him in all of our ways and not being wise in our own eyes, but fearing him and turning away from evil, there is, there is healing to be found, there's refreshment to be found. And in the, in the process of growth, of, of making mistakes, and in the process of learning the, the ins and outs and, and the difficult lessons, that's not a sign that God has abandoned us, it's a sign that he's refining us and he's sanctifying us. I'm thankful uh, this morning that there is a lot of reminders to not be wise in my own eyes, because I, I know that I'm not the only one that has that tendency, that has that, that, that leaning, that thinking that, well, I've done this enough, therefore I must know how to do it and I can keep doing it on my own, or oh, I don't need help with that, or or why would I bother God with something so small? But I think our, our thinking should instead be that we can come to God with anything, great or small, and He hears us and He listens to us and He is concerned about the decisions we make. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this truth and how Perhaps we've learned it in difficult seasons of life. Perhaps we're in the midst of learning a, a lesson or, or maybe, God, we are in a, um, a difficult place of constantly trying to be right in our own eyes and not going to you for help, not leaning on you um, for understanding, but trusting in ourselves instead of you. And it's just bringing greater hurt, greater pain, greater emptiness, and maybe we're not even aware of it. But I pray, Father, that you'd please bless um, us today with the ability to recognize, God, that there is so much more to be found in coming to you in prayer, and there's so much more um, refining, there's so much more peace, there's so much more joy to be found in your presence than in trying to go it alone. And maybe, Lord, just help us to, to wrestle with that thought of why would we want to go it alone when we have so much access and so much grace in your presence to help us through every circumstance that we face. Pray you'd help my heart, Lord, today continue to seek you. Pray you'd help the hearts of those, Father, who are heavy and need 
encouragement and need to be reminded again, Lord, that you are worth trusting through every situation. We praise and we thank you in your precious and powerful name. Amen. God bless. Merry Christmas.